Hey guys, Jared here, Magnetic Men's Club. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're gonna talk about the power dynamics in a relationship. And it does kind of go almost like you're on a teeter-totter. One t At one point, the man has more power in the relationship. Another point, the female has more power in the relationship. And so I thought it would be a good topic to discuss at what point does the power dynamic shift between the roles. And so we're gonna start with initial dating. When a man initially courts a woman or starts dating, she has the power, all the power in the relationship because she's the chooser. And because he's offering himself, there are certain qualities and attributes that of course she's going to look for in a mate. So she gets to choose. It could be looks, could be money, could be status. It could be maybe she's a little older and it's provisioning power. Whoever, whatever dynamic or whatever thing she's looking for, depending on what season of her life, she's going to look for mates that want the same thing. So in every new relationship, the women always have the power. They're the choosers. Remember, this is before sex. This is just the initial courtship. You're doing generally 100% of the phone calls. You're pursuing her. You're dating her, you're going out, buying meals, movies, whatever you are. You are in the process of courting her. She is in the process of interviewing you. This is kind of the dynamic. This is dating theory. So she has the power at this particular stage. Now, it's interesting what starts happening. After sex, the power starts shifting. Now guys, I know you hear this on social media sometimes and you might watch some other influencers. It's not immediately after the first time you guys have sex, you have all the power. There's a lot of other influences that affect this dynamic. Some of it could just be, it might take a few more sexual experiences with her for her to shift that power over because the first time you have sex, she might not be 100% sure about you. And the more times you have sex, it might shift it to, I accept him as my lover. So. You can't always say the first time you have sex with somebody, that next day or right after you climax, the power shifts. Sometimes that's true, but a lot of times that's not. Also, you have to remember, it can take a few more times of, of intimacy before she even wants to lock you down in a relationship. Not every woman wants a relationship. Every time a woman has sex, it doesn't necessarily mean the next step is a relationship. It's more true than not, but it's not 100% true. She might just be out at a club with you. You might have just met and she wants to sport fuck you. That doesn't mean she wants a relationship. That means she finds you high enough in attractiveness, high enough in whatever that thing is you do to her, which would allow her to have sex with you, doesn't mean you actually have a relationship with her. So the initial first time you have sex is when the shift starts to happen. It's not when it completely happens. Prior to sex, if, if you're courting her and she's already made the decision that you would make an amazing or you have amazing boyfriend material or you're an amazing boyfriend candidate, you know, basically, then the act of sex is actually a milestone to cement the decision in her mind. So remember, all up until this point, she's doing the choosing. Now, if she's already decided that you make good boyfriend material, you're a great candidate, then really it's just the milestone of sex or the act of sex is just the milestone to cement the decision in her mind. That's the next progression. Yes, 
we're having sex, now we're connected, now we're going to go into more of a relationship or we're going to go more to a committed relationship. That's at least what her thought is. None of this has been brought up yet. And this is kind of where that shift happens. So even the first time that she that she has sex with you, taking out the fact that she just wanted to sport fuck you, taking out those facts, just putting in the fact that there may be a relationship here and you just have sex with her even the first time, that power dynamic starts to shift as we discuss. And the reason she now needs to make sure that you as the man want to be a boyfriend or a serious partner. Remember, she just gave up sex. There's no commitment yet. And that's a very dangerous position for a woman to be in. She gave up the one thing that she has a value that you want. She just gave it up. And without a commitment, it's a very scary position for a woman to be in. Now follow me with this. This means that usually first time sex generally goes more to the power to providers than to the lovers. And this is because the frame with lovers tends to be short term and for the fun of it, while the provider tends to be more about I'm choosing him for the longer term. So again, it depends on what season of her life. If she's a bit younger, she's probably looking more for a lover than a provider. If she's a bit older, maybe she has been ran through. Maybe she's that party girl. Everybody, she's been passed around like Pez. Well, she's gotten the lover part out of her. She's had a ton of sex and now she's looking for a provider. She's looking for somebody to provide for her and her possible offspring in the future or her current offspring from another man. So it depends on what season she's coming into this relationship, what season of her life. So we talked about first time sex, that that power starts to shift. The more times they have sex, the power definitely shifts over to the man. Once that sex becomes a routine, that power shifts definitely to the men's side. Especially, as I said, if this sex is happening outside of a relationship, if she's giving up sex to this man without a relationship, then he has all the power. He's literally getting the milk for free and he has no responsibilities. This is a huge dynamic where he has way so much power in this relationship. And personally, this is where I think most men need to stay for a while, but that's for a whole other video. If there's no relationship status fully in place yet, the tendency is for her to pursue that official status. And she'll start using buzzwords like, so what are we? So where is this going? Where do we go from here? She'll start dropping hints that she wants a relationship with you. And it's a, like I said, it's a very hard position for her to be in because you haven't provided commitment. You haven't provided a relationship, yet she provided sex. Also, what happens is sometimes when women start having sex with a man that they're not really into, they don't really tick her box, but for a long-term provisioning, he might not be really good looking, but he might have some money. This is the beta males. We've talked about this in videos where you're not her first, her second, fuck, you might not even be her third pick. She's starting to have sex with you. She likes you, but you're, it's eh, it's okay. What's going to happen is that repeated exposure tends to increase in that liking and attraction. She's, you start growing on her. Now, are you going to be like that alpha ghost that we talked about in other videos? Fuck no, you're never going to be that. But she will start getting used to having sex with you. She will start liking it and she will start having more attraction to you. That sex, that skin to skin contact, the cuddling, that maybe the orgasms he gives you, all release the chemicals increasing that bonding and attraction. So it will happen. 
it just might take a little bit longer, especially if you're, you don't totally do it for her initially. I don't want you guys to get too caught up on that because you guys are all amazing as you are, but I'm saying this as a whole, not specific to your situation, but as a whole, this is more true than not. As women get older, they tend to look for longevity, a partner to pair bond. They don't look for love. They don't technically look for a love story. They look for a life story. Okay. You have to understand that. And if you are a man seen as thirties, mid thirties or forties, she's not necessarily in a relationship with you for a love story. Love doesn't have anything to do with it. It's more of that life story. Can we build together? Can we build something together? So you have to understand that. And, and this is true for men and women. It's more true for women, but there are situations where men, where a woman may be really into their man. And the man's into her, but not the way maybe he was into his exes or something like that. The more time she's around him, the same thing's going to happen. He gets used to her. They start having sex more. They start connecting more. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. I don't want to say, oh my God, you're her third pick or he's your third pick. What I'm saying is it does happen and you just have to understand it is what it is. We talked about before sex, the initial part of the relationship. Now we talked about first part of sex and really just you keep having sex. The power has shifted to the man during this time that you're having sex without a relationship, without that title. Now here's the funny thing. As soon as the relationship enters, as soon as there's the title of girlfriend, as soon as there's that title, that means there's commitment in her eyes. At that point, the power shifts back to her. Just at that moment. And here's why. When a man commits to a woman, more often than not, there's this understanding of sexual exclusivity. Or exclu exclusivity. Can I ever say that fucking word right? They agree there's a monogamy there. I'm only having sex with her. She's only having sex with me. Okay? That means the man has to give up his random sexual encounters or his ability to have random sexual encounters. And remember, one of the biological markers of being a male is we want to have as much sex as possible with as little investment as possible. Women want to have at least, as least sex as possible with as much commitment as possible. So in this dynamic, of course, the man gave up sexual proclivities with other women. He's agreed to be exclusive with her. So now when the two give commitment and exclusive to exclusivity to each other, they both give up the opportunity for random sexual encounters. That's the mating opportunity cost. However, that mating opportunity costs are higher for him strictly from a genetic position. Exclusivity is costlier for the man than it is for the women. Women have, or men have more to gain from random sex than women. It means that when the two give up exclusivity, when they, and, and, and to each other, meaning I'm only sleeping with you, you're only sleeping with me. The man gives up more than what he takes. And conversely, she gives, she takes more than what she gives. That's the big win for her. And it reflects the power of the dynamics. This is why that shift happens. He's giving up way, he's giving up a shit ton to have this commitment, which gives her that power. Also, once in a relationship, men also tend to lose their personal drive, they tend to drop in testosterone. Some researchers even think it's to help men switch from that hunter in them role, that they're hunting for women, that hunting for their food, and it's 
it makes him switch almost to like a nurturing role. I don't know if that's 100% sure. I did read that a little bit, so I thought I'd share that as one of the reasons why men sort of slow down in a relationship. It does get them ready. They don't have children, and that's coming on the way that gets them ready for that nurturing role. So now you're in the relationship. Now it's long term. What happens as those years, those months, those whatever, those kick, whatever, what happens when those months turn into years and you're in a long term relationship? She still maintains the power. In a lot of the relationships, and we have another video coming out about this, the man on paper has the official power, but the woman is the one who actually wields the most influence. As the relationship matures, she still re maintains that power. She still has at least the in more influence in the relationship. But where it shifts again is after children. So this is a little bit on the darker side, but this is usually, it's the man who has more power after the children. And because he can literally leave. Why does he have pow walk away power? Well, it's a good question. A woman is way more invested in her children than men are. Since women invest more in their children and can have fewer children, of course, they can only have one at a time or you know, maybe if they have two or three, but generally they can only take one to term at a time. A child is worth more to the mother than the husband is worth to the mother at that particular time. A child needs the mother to survive. Doesn't necessarily need the father. It's far easier for a man to just get up and leave. And there would be way more pressure on her to stick it out and stay. That means that the father could walk away and the mother would still have to take care of the children on her own. So right after that child is born, women need the men, the male help and support men more than men need the women at this particular point. Now, it'd be completely amoral for a man to do this, but I'm only highlighting when the power starts shifting. And this is exactly the time when that power shifts back to the man. But it would be a complete dickhead move for a man to do that. So I am putting that out there to let people know. And then finally, we're talking about just growing old. You've had your kids, you've raised your kids. Now you're kind of growing old and you're in your marriage, you're in your relationship. Who has the power then? Well, it's a good question. It's really paper power for him. It's real power for her. The power goes back to her. Most of the time, guys, the power goes to her. Biologically, men retain more rep reproductive potential over the years than women. And while that can be true for a few attractive, high-resource men who are not committed to the relationship, but it's not true for the majority of men. Actually, the opposite is true. 80% of all marriages of women that are college educated file for divorce after the age of 50. The truth is that most men grow complacent in their belief that their women will always be there. And they lose drive and they lose confidence in their ability to find women. The women I have much more power or interest to finding a new man. This is kind of what happens when the kids are out of school, out of college maybe, and they're kind of on their own, they start filing for divorce because there's no reason to be in the relationship anymore. And most women still initiate that divorce because they might want another man, but they're also fine on their own. Where men are kind of the opposite, we don't really want to start over, but that's just how it works. And so, Women, as they grow older, still tend to have more of the power in that relationship. That's all I have on this one. My name is Jared Skumik. If you found this video helpful, please hit like, hit subscribe, and that bell icon so you know when new videos are being dropped. In the description below, we have a brand new school platform. Everybody's invited to come check out. It's a very minimal cost. These are for people who want to level up. The people who just want freebies, there's another section down below. You can join our free Facebook group. But these, we're looking for the members of our school program to actually want to level up in certain areas of their life. It's a very nominal cost. It's $7 to enter. Take a look at it. We have a ton of videos, blog posts, emails, blogs, and we're able to interact 
with all of our students on a more intimate basis. So if that is something you find interesting, take a look at that. With that, have a great day, and we will talk soon. Thanks.